Thank you. The meeting is now recording. Thank you. Welcome to the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority Finance Committee meeting of December 8th, 2020. Um, I'd like to call the roll. So, Allison, could you call the roll? Novato Fire District. Here. Bolinas Fire District. Oh, I believe you muted yourself. Oh, sorry. Present. Thank you. Southern Marin Fire District. Present. Sleepy Hollow Fire District. County of Marin, City of Larkspur. Oh, am I City of Larkspur? Here. Yes, thank you. A quorum is present with four members. Thank you. Okay, we're going to item three, agenda adjustments. Are there any agenda adjustments? And Director Hilliard, if I may ask to, and I don't see her online yet, but um, if we could move, um, actually I see her online, let me move her over to panelist. And I asked that we can move um, the financial policy review item number six in front of the review of the mid-year budget status to uh, meet the fine line, the timeline of our treasurer. And so she can um, ex you know, expand upon the policy review items that she was involved with. Okay, thank you. I think I need a motion to make that change. Could someone move? Um, Direct going move I second. second. David. Was, sorry. David Kimball second. Oh, sorry, Director Kimball second. Um, okay, all, I have all in favor. Would you call the roll, please? Nevada Fire District. I see a I see a, a visual. Yes, I believe you might be muted. Hi. Thank you, <laughs> Bolinas Fire District. Yes. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. Motion passes. Great. Okay. Moving right along. This is open time item four, open time for public expression. The public is welcome to address the finance committee at this time um, on any item that's not on the agenda because you'll be given time to address uh, any item that appears on the agenda. Um, but we ask that you please limit your um, presentation to three minutes. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to address the committee at this time? I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item six, policy, financial policy review. Mark? Yes, I'll kick it off and I'm going to hand it off to Elisa. Um, just as a reminder, the um, financial committee created a subcommittee that included uh, directors Finn and Hilliard working with staff, myself and Elisa, to draft um, a series of financial policies uh, for the MWPA to follow. And um, we have six for your review today with an additional seven to come up at a later date, but we felt the six that we have in front of your board or your committee today were the important ones to get through so that we can have them agendized for the December 17th board meeting, have them approved. Um, and I, I would like to highlight one of the most important ones that we feel uh, we would like approved is the disbursement policy because all, um, all of our member agencies would have been um, wanting that information to know when they would start receiving those disbursements so they can have their um, budget planning Elisa, I'll pass it off to you. Good morning. So um, as Mark mentioned, the six that we have here, they're either the ones that were ready or that we need to have in place as soon as possible. Um, the, the fund disbursement policy, we feel pretty solid on that one because we went over it at the last meeting, but it's there for you to look at the, the, the language. Um, the two, in my view, that still need more refining are the first one, the purchasing policy. So we do want the board to review the limits that are set out there. And then we also de do need um, a resolution. I believe Director Hilliard brought that up um, to be in line, aligned with the uh, CUPCA regulations. So... Um, I think the spending limits are something that the board needs to approve, 
but if there's any other refinements that you all would like to see in that policy, we could go over it now so that we can change those for the December meeting. So in your packet, the, the spending limits appear on under the purchasing policy on page three, I think, is that correct? Uh, it's 1201.6.1 item two, or oh, starts at item one. So it's six thousand dollars. You said, do you want to go over that just quickly because for everybody? Sure. Yes. So um, actually, right before that, in twelve oh one point six, that last paragraph on the bottom of uh, on the bottom where it says the executive officer has discretion to approve an expenditure up to forty five thousand dollars, provided the expenditure will not cause. Um, the affected budget line to finish over budget. And especially because we're a new agency, we don't know what last, last minute expenses might come up in this first year. Um, we could budget more appropriately next year, but this gives the executive officer some discretion for that. So we want the board to definitely feel comfortable with that. Then on the next page, supplies and equipment, um, can you just mention the page number? I'm lost. Wait. We are on page number of the policy, page number three at the top of page three. Of the purchasing the, policy. The, the 45,000 comment that she's talked about is at the bottom of page two of policy 1201. Okay, I see it. Thank you. Okay. Can I just clarify? Am I on? Let's see, am I on? This is David. Can I just clarify on that uh, last paragraph on page two? So if the budget, if an, if, if there's an expenditure needs to be made up to $45,000 that isn't in the budget, or excuse me, let me see. Okay, I forget it. I don't need to question. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then the next one, these limits we, we leaned on some of Southern Marin's policies for some of these limits. So um, the first one, purchasing agent slash the executive officer does not need approval for purchases that are already accounted for in the budget unless the purchase is for a single item or service over $6,000. Again, that's kind of borrowed from Southern Marin Fire. Um, and then we get into the Kupka so that's why number two expenditures between six and 60,000 require a formal purchase order to purchase. This is Southern Marin Fire. I mean, we have a contract, I'm thinking Fire Safe Marin. We have, a, when I think of bills that are coming in this high, it's Fire Safe Marin or it's legal fees. Fire Safe Marin, we already have a contract and it's in the budget. So do we need this kind of language? We borrowed it from Southern Moon Fire. Oh, can, can, can we go back a little bit, uh, please? Um, I was muted um, on the, the, the last line on page two with the executive officer has discretion to approve an expenditure of up to $45,000. I see that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't meet um, on page four, item five, line one, um, the, the limit is $25,000 for contracts and services. So I, I don't understand the discrepancy. Why are we not adhering to one consistent level of authorization for the executive officer and then refer the rest of those to the board? Bruce, if I may, the, um, the 45,000 is for expenditures that have already been approved that are basically going over budget. So these are expenditures- For that particular project. But um, I would have the authority to approve up to 45 if it doesn't make that entire budget category go over budget. Uh, th th thanks, Mark. That, that, thanks for clarifying that for me. I really appreciate it. Good. Now, we had discussed these, and um, they're really in line with what the subcommittee had um, gone over, but this is a time for questions. Anybody having any questions, or is there more that you would like to point out, Elisa? No, that's it. We just, we just basically want the board to be in alignment with these dollar thresholds. Okay. Well, and, and uh, just to follow up on Alyssa's comment that we would need a resolution from the board of directors 
to um, become um, aligned with CUPCA in order to accept or to um, adopt these uh, limits. So um, it's a, a bureaucratic and administrative step that would be fairly easy to accomplish. Great, so you'll be preparing a resolution? If, cool. if the finance committee so recommends. All right. Um, are there any other comments or questions on this particular item? Okay, are there any comments or questions from the public on this particular item? Looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Okay, hearing none. I need a, uh, a motion to create a resolution to adopt these policies. So moved, uh, resolution to, to prepare, the executive also prepare a resolution to, uh, to go before the board to adopt these policies. Thank you, moved by Director Goins. Second. Uh, I second. Second Kimball. by Director Kimball. Um, we have, maybe we have a roll call. Nevado Fire District. Aye. Bolinas Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you so much. All right. Moving on. Item five, review of mid-year budget status. And the recommendation is that um, we review the mid-year reports and make recommendations to the executive officer and treasurer for any budget adjustments and give direction to bring them to the board of directors for approval. Have you all had a chance to look at the financial review? And if so, have you ha do you have any questions? Did we want to review the rest of the policies or are we good on the, the rest of the policies? I, I, oh, I, I thought we did the, so go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Director. I'd like to review the rest of the other policies too. I do have several other questions, please. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, going back. Still on item six, which is item five. Okay, go ahead, Alisa. <laughs> okay, so um, if we go in order of the number, the next one is the credit purchasing credit card purchasing policy, which is um, just for the executive officer and myself are going to be the ones who have credit cards. This one to me is is pretty straightforward and is ready to go unless anyone has any questions or changes. I have a question about when the new person is hired to work with Mark, um, as you know, described in the job description attached to this packet. Will they also have a credit card? That would make sense, Mark. I I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Um, does anyone have any? questions or comments about the credit card purchasing policy. Okay, hearing none, um, does any member of the public have a comment about the credit card purchasing policy? I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members and there is no public comment. Okay, hearing none, we're moving on to policy 1203, fund disbursement policy. Yeah, so the fund, fund disbursement policy we went over last time and this document documents what we decided upon. Um, the only action item I have on this is that we want to draft um, something for the member agencies so that they know what to expect in alignment with this policy. Okay. But this one, it does it does spell out what we decided last time that basically both types of funds will be passed on to the member agencies and they'll provide quarterly reports. And if they don't spend it all, they are holding on to the money and we will both be in agreement as to how much they have left over to roll over into the upcoming years. And, and if I may add, when it comes to the local mitigation project disbursement, there was considerable conversation amongst the subcommittee, whether the, that should be a, a, a pure pass through or if it should be a reimbursement type um, model. And um, after going back and forth, um, going through the pros and cons, 
and looking at some of the enabling language for the MWPA, we felt that it was uh, more appropriate to be passed through with documentation um, provided by the member agencies showing that they have budget allocations within their budget system showing that they would be expending the, making the expenditures towards local mitigation projects. We also built in language that any projects funded by the MWPA would be, um, if they require environmental compliance, would be going through an environmental compliance process. Um, it's similar to a, what's called a contingent funding model. And um, as Elisa stated, if they do not expend all of their local mitigation funds, then their budget report would show that money in reserve and we would, um, you know, verify that, that the amounts that we agree upon those amounts. Um, an example might be, and I'll use um, Director Kimball as an example, some, some agencies, their local mitigation project funds may be at the size that they really can't have a robust project and they may table their local mitigation funds for a year in order to build up a, a more robust budget and have a bigger project get more bang for their buck. Excellent. Catherine, you're muted. <laughs> okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, are there any other questions or comments about how this will, yes, director, go ahead. So I have a question. I, I was in the previous meeting and um, what, is, what is completely absent here is a discussion of, of core program uh, funds and allocation of core, core programs. And at some point, you know, this should be, you know, specifically identified in our, in our uh, fund disbursement policies. So I just suggest um, that we consider when and where and, uh, and, and we try to get that done here fairly shortly. Uh, Director Goins, if I may, I would, um, since the core programs are what MWPA's uh, direct spending will be, I would argue that the purchasing policy is what covers our core spending and perhaps we can add a language into the policy statement at the beginning of the purchasing policy saying that this is um, for the core spending. Okay, I just think it's important that, that we're, we're clear as to, where, as to where those policies exist. Um, uh, it, it's, it, it seems incomplete, just a quick scan to me. So um, Director Goins, would you suggest that right at the beginning at 1203.1, uh, you put insert language to say that? I think, yes, that's what Executive Officer Brown, I, that, that would um, fulfill my desire to know where this language exists and where someone can go to look for it to make sure uh, what the process is and to, uh, of course, assure what we're doing is right. It's possible that, um, Mark, I'm just thinking out loud that the policy statement could say to member agencies for D and L, uh, disbursements. You mention it below in the definitions, um, and then you could put your pointer to the to the as Bruce said, the 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 core projects in that same sentence or in the purpose, either one. But okay, that, that way it spells it right out up front that the fund disbursement policy is focused on DNL projects. Go elsewhere. Here's the pointer for core projects. May I ask a question about that? Um, thank you, Director Goins, for bringing that up because I actually hadn't thought of it because this isn't happening this first year. Right. It's focused on what's happening next year, I mean, this year. So for the core spending, tell me, how would that work? <laughs> Are we, it's not a pass through? <laughs> no, the core the, the core spending will be coming from um, the MWPA. So let I'll use a, a, a an evacuation route clearing example. Let's say um, the ops committee um, picks a a large scale evacuation route clearing project that would likely go through multiple jurisdiction, and they make that one of our core projects. Then it would be the MWPA that reaches out to the contractors or whoever we hire to do that work and then the funds would go straight from MWPA to the contractors rather than going from MWPA to one of our member agencies to the contractor. Whereas the local mitigation projects, they're facilitating and managing that process. Therefore, the, the funds are passed through from MWPA to the member agency. Right. Okay. Thank you. That, that makes sense as to why you would refer to the purchasing policy then. Exactly. Okay. 
Good. Okay. Helpful. All right. Any other comments or questions about this? All right. So um, are there any comments or questions on policy 1203 from the public? I think Brenny raised hands in our audience members and there's no public comment. Okay, thank you very much. Do you need any kind of action on this individual policy, Mark? When we have a, the motion for, I suggest we have a motion for the slate of policies and we just, that when we have that motion that it includes language to um, add core language to the definitions of 1203. Okay. All right, then moving on to policy 1204, accounting, auditing, and financial reporting. Elisa. Yes, this one in my view is straightforward. All that I did was I added some language saying that we were going to um, switch auditors based on recommendations by Yasby. So that's all I did to, that's the only change that happened since we last talked about this one. Switch auditors meaning an, after a certain period of time Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Yeah. Sure. And in fact, we don't even need to switch firms. We only need to switch um, whatever lead auditor is in charge at a certain firm. So I just stated that we're going to comply with whatever code um, it's mentioned in there, the code. We will comply with that with that requirement. Okay. okay. Are there any comments or questions related to policy 1204? Not from me. I'm just wondering as a practical matter, if aside from the policy, the finance committee wants to discuss and whether we'd want to comment to the board about the authority using whichever auditor uh, Southern Marin is using. It will make Southern Marin's admin staff's life a lot easier if they're only dealing with one firm. It can be two different auditors within that firm, but I know because my agency does accounting for three different agencies, mm -hmm. it's just helpful to have the same firm, even though they use different auditors for the different entities. So it might be a comment outside the policy that, that we might wanna to suggest to the board that that might be helpful to Southern Marine Fire. I'm sure Lisa appreciates that comment. Very much, yes. Thank you, Dan. So you're suggesting not having that language in the policy, but just mentioning it to the board? Well, I mean, I think the language should be there because that language is still, oh yes, my language, yes. I think it's not something you'd write in the policy. I think it would be something, I would just say as a, a member of the ops committee, I would be comfortable if you're using the same firm. I think it will just be a, a big headache saved. Um, and those of us who are in these offices and deal with this a lot know there's only a handful of these firms that are really active in and around the North Bay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get bids from the same handful every time you put this stuff out. So um, I don't know who you're using now, but I suspect uh, it's somebody that all the finance officers are familiar with in Marin County. Dowie and Associates, have you heard of them? Yeah. Yep. I know them very well. Yeah. So, uh, Catherine, I have a question for Dan. Yes. Uh, Dan, I, I think that's a great suggestion. Is there a reason why the policy wouldn't be worded such that it wouldn't preclude the use of the same uh, audit firm? Why well, would I, just, not I just think the policy looks good now because it's always possible Southern Marin will decide they don't want this contract down the road to be the right. finance department for the authority so this is something i would just sort of have stand alone it can be a, a statement adopted by the board where you just say you're comfortable with mm -hmm. the same firm serving southern marin and the and the wildfire prevention authority well, it's fine with me i think it's a good suggestion good all right so um elisa and and mark do you have enough um direction to know what to do 1204, yes, absolutely. Okay, good. All right, any other comments on policy 1204? Okay, any comments from the public on po uh, financial policy number 1204? Looking for any raised hands and there's no public comment. Great, thank you. All right. 
Moving on, we're on policy number 1205, internal control and whistleblower policy. Lisa? Okay, so um, the two changes that we made since we discussed this last time in this report is in, um, Let's see, one is that instead of having, because we, we did borrow some of this wording, wording from Southern Marine, instead of having the executive officer approve the payroll reports, since he's the only one on the payroll report, it makes more sense to have a director do it. And so we're going, um, I'm gonna include the payroll journals when we have checks to sign and whoever, whatever director is signing those can, over, can look the payroll journal over. So that is um, on page three you'll see payroll reports and transactions. All paychecks reports must be reviewed and signed by a director. So that's different from last time. And then um, the other part was we added the whistleblower language at the end, the last page, page four. And um, we just put in some language that we looked at with other agencies. Okay, that's 1205.9? Correct. Okay, take a minute to look it over and... Okay, are there any questions or comments about this policy? Okay. Hearing none, are there any questions or comments about the policy 1205 from the public? Mr. Brenning raised hand and there is no public comment. Hey, thank you. All right, we're moving on to policy number 1215, web transparency compensation. Alisa. Yes, this one is good to go. The only change I made was in 1215.2, um, the policy section. The last sentence there, we had fiscal year in there, but the um, reporting required by California is on a calendar year basis. So that's the only made change we made, and this one looks good to go. Okay. All right. Any comments, suggestions, or questions? Okay. Hearing none, are there any comments or questions or suggestions from the public? I'm looking for any raised hand, and there's no public comment. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I think what we need is a motion to move these on to the full board uh, with the recommendation of um, approval and as amended in this meeting. Right. Um, so I, I, I so move. Okay, Director Kimball moves. Can I have a second? Second. Second, Director Goins. Could you call the roll, please? Nevada Fire District. Aye. Lewis Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. The motion passes. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so moving on, we are now at item five, review of mid-year budget status. Recommendation that the committee review the mid-year report, make recommendations to the executive officer and treasurer for any needed budget adjustments and give direction to bring them to the board of directors for approval. Mark? Yes, and this is a, a direct reflection of our last um, uh, finance committee meeting last month, um, the first part of our mid-year review. And um, Elisa um, and I identified three locations where we feel mid-year budget adjustments are needed. and. Lisa, if you needed to take off, we understand. And um, the first item is in the financial admin services, um, proposing to change the budget to 106,384 to amend um, what is really occurring. And, and mostly that is has to do with rent the MWPA is paying towards the Southern Rent Fire Protection District. Uh, the next item is in um, uh, the board approved an extension of chipper days uh, in through November. And so that amount would cover that extension. And then the final and most comprehensive was uh, the legal services. And as we know that um, as we entered into the development MWPA and um, hiring Epstein and Holtz for our legal services, uh, during those interviews, none of the um, legal firms felt comfortable giving an estimate of 
what a, an emergency entity would need such as ours. And, um, you know, we, as we discussed, we quickly outpaced that budget. So I was able to reach out to the three firms that we use um, and get estimates, as you see here in the, in the um, um, staff report. And they are, um, I asked for them to be on the high side so that we can err on the side of over budgeting rather than under, under budgeting and having to make another um, adjustment. And on top of their um, high end estimates, I built in a little um, wiggle room as well. So again, so that we can make sure that we are, we come in under budget rather than over budget. And I'm open to any questions. Thank you so much. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Okay, I think this is exactly what we had, uh, you know, assumed that we needed to boost the, especially the legal funds because of the startup and um, appreciate all the work that and dedication you all have put into to getting these numbers right as far as this goes. So um, if I don't hear any questions or comments on this, um, could I have a motion to approve the recommendation that this be moved along to the full board? Motion, please. Uh, motion, um, Director Goins. Second. I'll second. Director I'll second. Schwartz. Thank you so much. All right. Could we have a roll call, please? Uh, if we can, we should probably should have public comment prior. Sorry. To... Thank you for reminding me. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this item? Thank you. If you'd like to provide public comment, I believe I saw a hand raised for a moment. So if you'd like to provide public comment now. Okay. You can raise your hand again. Please say your name and give us your comments. Um, it does look like no more hands are raised, so perhaps there is no public comment. Um, so at this time, there are no hands raised, so there's no further public comment. Okay. So hearing no public comment, um, we had a motion and a second. Um, could you please call the roll? Nevada Fire District. Salinas Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. The motion uh, passes. Great. All right. Thank you. So now we're moving on to item seven, planning and program manager, salary range and allocation, which is the last item in your packet. Um, so Mark, would you please lead us in this? Absolutely. And uh, just as a little bit of background, the um, position description for this position as well as the executive officer was reviewed by the, the executive committee on December 3rd. And they gave me some minor recommendations for changes. Um, but what we're asking the finance committee to really to focus on is, to, is two components of the financial aspect. First of all, the salary range um, and the finance committee's comfort level of that salary range um, that was included in the memo um, from Gene Bonander. And then the second question, and it's a question that it eventually needs to be answered by both the finance committee and the board of directors, and that is what is the def definition of administrative work for the MWPA? Um, and um, it figures that our first position that we're asking to hire above the executive officer um, kind of lands in my eyes in the middle as I researched uh, administrative descriptions, um, whether they were federal descriptions related to grant work or as Director Goins suggestion from the um, OMB office from um, the White House or at state levels and local government levels, um, legal schools, uh, you can basically pick and choose the, the definition that you want to find. Um, and so um, I, I felt it would be um, not really beneficial to review those definitions because you can simply find the one you like and adopt it. And I think what the important item is, what is included in the staff report, and I'll read the last sentence, um, and that's from the Joint Powers Agreement. Uh, the board shall determine the methodology for calculating administrative costs and talking to our legal counsel 
she feels that it's not just the calculating of the 10% of the 60 or the 10% of the 20, but it's also calculating what efforts a person is putting forth defined is defined as administrative or not. And um, I would argue that it, we don't necessarily have to have all our positions land in one bucket or another. Um, the executive officer is clear that lands fully in administrative. Um, our, you know, the contract with Southern Marin Fire is clear. It lands fully in administrative. If we were to start hiring employees, whether it's for, and I'm not proposing this at this time, but let's say down the road, we start hiring defensible space evaluators, or we start hiring people actually to do the physical um, vegetation management work and let, instead of contracting, well, those people clearly are not administrative. And so they would f fall in that one bucket. But I feel that the, the way the position description was written for the planning and the program manager, that person could be prorated that some of their activities are administrative and some of their activities are operational. And wanted to get your feedback so I can provide an informed um, position to the board uh, to, as we create, as the um, language states, the methodology for calculating administrative costs. And I would suggest that we take a thoughtful approach in defining that. We don't have to be rushed in doing that. Um, while I am eager to hire the planning and program manager, uh, when we look at our administrative expenditures in comparison to the 10% of the 60%, we're well below that budget. It's just a hair under 1.2 million that's allocated. And we're at a, um, about 450,000 that we've expended in administrative costs so far. So we, we could absorb the entire position as administrative now, as we work through that definition of the methodology for calculating administrative costs. So I'm just looking for your thought input so that I can inform the board. Okay. I have a thought and input. I think Please. it's very reasonable, incredibly reasonable for the, for the work that you're seeking, for you having somebody solid right behind you that knows the details of that you know, and that can actually function and has the ability to do all of the things that you require. And I think that the salary range is modest um, for that type of work. And I, when I calculated the benefits above, it's about, gosh, 15, eight, maximum of 18% at this point. That's really low because I'm used to seeing it at the 30% level. So I think that this is very, very well thought out, very reasonable. And, um, and I think if we go any lower, we might not find the quality of person you want. So that's my opinion. And your thoughts as far as administrative versus operational budgeting? Well, I think this is definitely within administrative. And since we're so low, I mean, I'm re we're keeping our promise to the public. And um, I've initially, we need top class people to get the work done so we can show the public that we're on the ball and that we're doing what they want to do. This is worth the expense. That's my feeling. So in, any else? other questions? Or? I'm Mark I, and Catherine's great, great comments. And I'm, I'm in agreement. Um, I, I, I originally looked at um, this, at this job description several weeks ago um, when it was new before the board. And I found myself trying to distinguish, you, you characterize it as, is it administrative or is it operational? And as an operations section chief level <laughs> incident command team leader, you know that operations is essentially taking a, 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 pl a planning document and and then moving it to the to the boots on the ground that that handle the tools that that move the vegetation that you know whatever build the lines fall the trees all that stuff, uh, and I I I too think that this is. Um, um, it is is operational, and so I found myself asking the question. Uh, is this, is, are these duties, uh, what are the duties associated with getting the job done uh, on, on the ground once the plan is complete? And I, I think that, um, I think this largely applies. I would be interested in, 
I, uh, in looking at the OMB regulations and, and any relevant state uh, direction. So the Office of Management budget, budget drives federal expenditures and federal grant funds and it, it down to the pan, down to the, you know, periods, uh, it, it guides what is what. So I'd be interested in um, if you could share um, what research you would done, just so I can have a little bit of background, maybe, maybe better advise. Um, I, 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 uh, I, I really think we should uh, write a policy and be specific as to what is administrative, what defines administrative and what defines um, the operational side. And uh, recalling that uh, Director Kohler um, last, uh, when was it, a um, week and a half ago, specifically uh, asked us to be sure that whatever policies that we decide we want to adopt, that we at least check them against uh, the F federal OMB uh, guidance and any state guidance, if nothing else for consistency, as we may be applying for federal funds uh, through, you know, uh, and state funds through various programs, forest service funds, CAL FIRE funds, um, FEMA funds, um, we're going to have to have something that, that, that passes the red face test um, and that we're not, we're not categorizing something as, uh, as operational when it is in their definition administrative. So I think we need to go slow with this. Uh, I, I appreciate your, you know, that we're, we're well within we, the 1.2, uh, uh, the 10% uh, go, go slow with this and, and, and really get something in print that we've we vetted uh, appropriately vetted. Excellent, thank you, uh, Dan. Did you have something? Yeah, um, I've never seen a grant that looks at a job description, so that's new to me. Uh, the way we do it in Larkspur is that the actions, activities, and work assigned qualifies to be billed against a grant. So for example, we're currently doing a pretty substantial bridge construction project. And I have a number of employees that portions of their time are billed against the federal grant. And I don't have any concerns that we could move forward and hire this project manager with the direction to mark that we would want him whenever possible to qualify himself and any staff member for portions of their time to be recoverable against federal and state funds. And I would rather we move forward and not be hesitant because I've just, I've never seen it constructed that way where you disqualify positions based on the way their job descriptions are written. Yes, uh, Director Kimball. Thank you so much. Yeah. David, you're muted. I'm sorry. Uh, Dan, that's very helpful. And it, it, I think it helps address something I was going to ask. If, if this position is doing uh, applying time that is directly um, needed for the project, I don't know why time couldn't be apportioned to administrative or to the project. And um, given what you just described, I agree it would be better that we keep moving um, with the idea that, uh, with the principle that um, it, if the position is doing work for a project in, me in measure in the, in the core category that needs to be done and would otherwise be done by somebody else, we should apportion it accordingly and assign those costs where the, where the time is expended. Am I saying that? Well, right? I I, yes, and I, I suspect even Mark's time, much of it can be qualified if he works down in the trenches of a particular grant project. And a lot of grant projects, grant funds also just let you do a straight up 5% admin recovery charge too. So- Would you have to um, limit that to only grants? I mean- No, I just think that's where the concerns coming from that was expressed by other board members outside the committee is, uh -huh. is the grant activity. I mean, at the end of the day, I. I think the other question for the whole board is, are these positions in the spirit of yeah. the measure that was before the voters? And I, I, yeah. I feel confident that this program manager is very much in the spirit of what was put in front of the voters. Um, and I, excuse me, I have to agree with that. I, I agree with those. My experience is the same. 
as Director Kimball's and Director Schwartz that it's the allocation of funds to the right fund, the time to the right fund. And, uh, and with respect to Director Kohler's concerns, I think we need to show her, but I do think that we should move forward with this. So um, that's I'm, my- opinion. I'm for moving forward. Uh, I don't want you to get me wrong. I just want to be prepared to respond to the, the questions that have been raised previously that will will come up again, yes. I can assure you, in public meeting. And if we're not prepared, and, and I recall federal funds under grant funds, 171, what it is, it's personnel, equipment, and supplies, and other. Those are the four categories. And then you apportion them, and this is from my memory many years ago, but you, you apportion them as, as appropriate. Some of it may be some administrative work, some of it may be um, uh, project related work and I'm comfortable with Dan and David uh, have, you've both characterized this I'm, I'm in total agreement that, that we should be able to apportion but we, we need to have a we need to have a written policy that states as such and um, and I, I it, it's in and, and and give it the red face test um, uh, for, for uh, the director of caller will inevitably be asking this question and she won't let go until she gets the answer so um, Executive Officer Brown, do you think that you can work with President Goins and Director Kohler to form that kind of language that they're looking for um, while we still move ahead with this? Absolutely, we can move ahead with the position and, and without a doubt with it. And um, my recommendation is that I um, myself and um, Southern Marin staff through our contract continue to refine our data collection and start creating a recommendation for that methodology for calculating administrative costs. And we would make sure that the executive committee and the finance committee have opportunities to review those and then bring them to the full board for uh, adoption. Great, is that agreeable to everyone? Okay. Yes. I'm agreeable to it, I, I just, I'm a little uncertain what this policy is actually going to say, because I think Mark is going to find that for every pot of money he goes after, federal or state or wherever, he's going to have to come to the board and say, this is this is how much of this money will go toward each thing. And well, Dan, I think, let me clarify what I'm really after for now is of our 60% of, or our 10% of the 60%, is any of that, is, is, is this position all meet the definition of administrative costs for MWPA budgeting? Or is this part of, as Director Kimball mentioned, would part of the salary of the project uh, planning and project uh, program manager be a project cost within the core program? Well, I, I would suggest if that's what you're after, Mark, I would I would submit the board, I would encourage the board to be comfortable that if in any given year, 100% of this cost had to be borne as admin, that's fine. And you are going to make it your regular practice to suggest when this person should be apportioned to some of these other pots, right? Um, I don't think it's gonna be the same every year. You know, right. There's going to probably be some years where there's more activity to charge that person's time against. And there's going to be some years where admin's going to have to bear a larger portion of the cost. That's so you keep a seasoned, experienced person in, your, in the corral and working for you and, and keeping all that institutional knowledge. And, and that's, that's great feedback, Dan. And that's definitely something we can build into the recommendation to the board. Because I, I agree with you. It's kind of a sliding scale, right? Um, and I, yeah. and it could, could, and it will slide based on the time of year. Yeah, exactly. And the particular projects that are, that are coming up and, and will be budgeted for in that fiscal year. So as I'm in agreement uh, I, with Dan, with you, but it can be apportioned annually as the work dictates. And, and just to clarify, I'm, I'm just seeking your, your input, which is exactly what I'm receiving. We have no need for a, any motions or anything like that, but um, a reminder that we do need um, an opportunity for public comment. Can, can, can uh, I guess we, we're not, actually we're not, to, we're into discussion. We should be into questions and clarification. Right. 
Yes, I'll, please go ahead, President uh, Blaines. I'll, I'll wait for discussion uh, after public comment. Okay. Um, is there any public comment on this item? I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members. Bruce Bartel, you may unmute yourself and provide public comment. Thank you. Welcome, Bruce. Good morning. I think I'm going to be one of those uh, calling out for a lot of definition of what's administrative versus what's uh, on the ground work. Uh, clear definitions of what crosses over to what. And I look back to my uh, days as a hospital administrator where almost all my time was administrative, but there were times based on my background, I had to go to the operating room and help take care of a patient. And that was clearly frontline work that was not administrative, but it was fairly easy to call out um, regardless of whether or not I was working on a project. Uh, it was, and my time was assigned to that project it was still administrative unless I was actually physically taking care of a patient. And put in that context, I'm gonna ask later for some clear definitions of when that crosses over. And I think some of the distinctions you're tending to make are a little artificial. And I'll, I'll flesh this, these thoughts out a little bit more later, but right now I'm on the pushback camp. All right, thank you so much um, for your input. Um, I'm looking for any further public comment and there is no, no raised hand. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bartell, appreciate it. Um, okay, let's continue the discussion. Uh -huh. So um, this is Director Goins here. I'm, um, uh, I, I'm interested that we, um, in, in our budgeting can, can account for and, and put out a budget that, that does have a, a line item that identifies what is administrative um, of, 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 of what expenditures are administrative. I think we're responsible to real time, first of all, consider it in our budgeting so that we can give an accounting. Mark, you say we're at about 4%, which is, which is wonderful, of course. Um, so that we want to be able to tell that story to the public to reassure them that we've put our thinking into it. And then uh, we have talked about having a, um, uh, the, uh, the, the accounting group do real time uh, accounting of expenditures in that line item so that we can, again, tell the public uh, that we're abiding by the, the joint powers language and, and, the, and the guidance and direction and limitations that are therein. So, um, I, I, I'm just advocating for this being uh, clearly articulated in our in our budget, uh, proposed budget, and and as we as we report through the year, uh, for for openness and communication with the public. Absolutely. Okay. So, Mark, are you looking for? Um, well, we're sending this on to the board for approval so that you can actually start the hiring process or? Well, the, I'm just looking at your recommendation for um, if you, and your guidance and not necessarily um, your, your, the guidance on the, the six to 10% or the you know, administrative versus operational costs and also your guidance on if you felt that the salary range was um, appropriate, which I'm receiving that from you. And then um, as far as the position description and job description, I received feedback from the executive committee and I've already started building that into the board packet for December 17th. Okay, well, um, I've, I've expressed my feeling about the salary range, but the other members have, not, I mean, has anyone else? Yes, Director Goins. I, I think it's reasonable. I expressed it so in public on record at the last, uh, Great. So I'm I'm with you, Director Hilliard. Thank you, Director Kimball. I, having been out of the that market for so long, it's hard for me to know. But my question, and I think it's been answered, is is that an adequate salary and um, benefit package to to cross the threshold into quality? You know, a, a sub population of quality candidates, and it, otherwise we're being penny wise and pound foolish and. Right. If you're comfortable with that, I am too. I just don't have a way to assess that 
other than to ask you, have you really considered that? And it sounds like you have. And, and I'll fill in a little bit of a gap for you. Um, my apologies for not presenting this beforehand, but Gene Bonander did reach out through um, the Bay Area, both in private and the public sector for like positions. And she feels that that is a competitive range. Thank you. And Director Schwartz, what, do you, how, what are your feelings about the salary range? Uh, I, I, I think it's probably accurate and uh, I'd actually be more concerned whether it'll be sufficient because I think this is going to end up being a highly specialized person. So Mark, I want to make sure you know, at least from this member of this committee, you know, if, if you do go recruit with this salary and range and it's not working out, it, we're in our infancy. Those are the types of conversations that come back. Like don't make a hire if you, if you discover you need something else. I mean, I, I, it's hard. You're doing a very specialized set of tasks. There's not going to be like a huge pool of people who've been well trained for it. You're going to be looking for generalists who are really nimble and, and can handle a lot of different topics, but still have some familiarity with fire prevention. I, I, I see a lot of nodding heads. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. I think we're a lot of nodding heads with that yeah. because even though this is, you know, done Bay Area wide, whatever, this is still Marin County. The cost of living here is quite high and it's also, um, but the concern for keeping our administrative costs, I agree with Director Schwartz. You know, if you find that this is not possible uh, to get who you want, please come back. Okay, absolutely. Appreciate it. Good. All right, so you don't need a motion for this. This is just recommendations and yep. great. Okay, so then um, moving on, item eight, information items. Um, Executive Officer Brown, do you have any? I have no and none additional. Okay, um, item nine, committee members request future agenda items. Does anyone on the finance committee um, have an, a suggestion for the next meeting agenda items? Well, well we want to be revisiting uh, the work that Mark's going to be doing uh, at the re uh, regarding administrative and project. Um, you know, the, the, as, as, uh, yes. Okay. I, believe, I believe I can fold that into one of our existing um, scheduled meetings, but absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, for the good of the order, are there any other items um, before we adjourn that anyone would like to bring up at this time? Are there any other public comments at this time? Thank you for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Okay, then. Hearing none, thanking you all. Could we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Director Schwartz, second. Bruce, Bruce second. Okay, Director Kimball, all in. Oh, okay, I guess we have to. Do we have to have a roll call vote? No, we, we don't have to. Okay, all right. Thank you so we'll much, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you right. for That's your public good. input, Mr. Bartell. And I'll see you next time. Right. Take care, guys. Thank, right. Thank you. you.